how we doing today? JP Soares right here. Welcome to our cigar box guitar building video. Today we're going to show you how we build these things from scratch, starting with uh, my dad's workshop and finishing with my workshop. So we're going to be installing electronics on this one later today, but we're going to show you how my dad crafts these amazing, awesome, one-of-a-kind, unique necks, which makes these things so special, part of it. Anyway, enjoy. Check it out. What kind of, we got three different kinds of wood going on here. What's to That's make these necks? African mahogany. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Beautiful wood. And expensive too. And this is select pine from New Zealand. All right. And that is no lie. And this is white oak. Okay. So we're starting off with this and, uh, and we wind up I'll with this. I'll show you how I do it. <laughs> Fill up a couple of pieces and show you how it's done. Okay. And then we'll put them in the clamps. The middle piece, and that's the select pine from New Zealand. Okay. And I make that approximately a light 7 sixteenths. <laughs> and we're going to make up two more. Yeah. I'm going to put those over here. Yeah. That's the inside. Yeah. Oh, that's the, that's for that's two inside. Okay, gotcha. yeah, On most of them. Now we're going to sand the edge off. Nice. All right. There's those two pieces. Yeah. My red wood is thick. That looks like a heavy quarter. Close enough. Well, <laughs> nothing's exact anymore. As for the red wood. Light three eighths. All right. I'm going to mill up the oak. Piece of it. Yeah. 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 Four. What we got going on? You've got. Red mahogany from Africa. Mm -hmm. You have select white pine from New Zealand mm -hmm. and white oak from Arkansas. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> okay, now I'll show you how we glue these up, guys. This is oh, the secret. Luck. This is the secret sauce right here, folks. I'll show you how we attach them. We've been keeping this under wrap for years, and now y'all are gonna see how it how it happens. Mm -hmm. Coming down. Cool. All right, here's all our pieces. I put these over here. Now, beauty, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's sharp. Here's all our pieces. One, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That makes two necks. Jig, which has to be flat. It has to be real flat. It's a parchment paper so that the glue doesn't ooze through. Ah, stick, stick, on to my the, jig. stick to the jig, right? I-beam to keep the back side flat and screw that down. Oh, 
Oh, she can check to make sure it's flat. It's this wood that I've got is absolutely flat. Okay, now this here. One, two, and three. See, it's humid down Florida here. And you do get soaking wet. This prevents okay. going to do is we clamp them down, it takes all the work to jump. Don't have to over tighten it. Just push it down to the table. Mm -hmm. Just enough to keep them there. You don't want to you don't have to go too tight. There you have it, folks. Yeah. I leave these in for 48 hours. Pretty much can't go anywhere, and that's where it stays when it dries. Leave these in the clamp for 48 hours, so I'm pretty sure they'll be okay now. Yep. Take them off. Now it'll be straight, too. Yep, and they're straight. That's the most important thing is to make them straight. Mm -hmm. In this high humidity, we got to keep them in for two days. Nice. It's hot out. Mid July, South Florida. 48 hours. That's my. So far, I haven't seen one of the next warp yet. So they won't warp. It's working. If they do, you throw them away. <laughs> it happens now and then. So what you doing there? I'm taking it apart. Pulling out the put, uh, cured next. Parchment paper on it so the glue doesn't stick to the everything. This is some serious stuff it's out nice here. It's nice and folks. straight. It is. 
Awesome. Trademark Source High Productions neck right there. I like the smell of that. That glue. Everything I know. All right. So once you once you do this, what's the next step? I'll run these through the saw and get the glue off of the top and true them up. Mm hmm. This is just squaring off the ends. Saw that 30 years old, and a little fiberglass <laughs> fixing on it. There you but go. Hey, it I wouldn't take it to a job site. No, it really is <laughs> awesome. <That's> awesome. <laughs> Rounding these off, it does it nice and flat and mm -hmm. quick. Make do with what I got, you know. Yeah. Up another jig. Yep. Let's just uh, shave down with a. Okay, you're gonna shave down the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. What kind of blade is that? Dado blade. That's a dado blade. It's also 40 years old, 45 years old. Down it down a little. So what do we got going now? Yeah, that looks pretty rough on the center. It really doesn't take much time to clean that up. <laughs> I can't believe it. That thing looks sweet. 80 grit, random orbital, 40 cable is the best one I found. Nice and smooth. Damn. Nice and smooth. Sweet. So that's that process. So now comes a real cool part, huh? Well, I like routers. They do wonders. Get the router attached to the bottom of that. Yes, sir. Final sanding. Awesome. That's that freaking artwork there, pal. There we go. Don't give a shit what they say. It is. Yeah, that's awesome. You see all the burn marks on there yep. from the router bit, and that just happens with routers, so you've got to sand them out. Yep. Screw here, 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 and a screw here. Piece of scrap wood, and I drill a hole. 
which is the same diameter as the stainless steel screws that we use. They're number 10 by 24 mm -hmm. stainless steel screws. One. Counter sinks them a little bit. And that, I'll show you exactly how we do it. That goes right there. I like to put these in the center. And that's two and three eighths that way, two and three eighths that way, two and three eighths that way. The way I get these straight is I don't cut that center out until I drill all the holes. And you can't go wrong. Go like that. Put that baby in. And put that in. That gets it. That lines everything up for you. This hole. And that way. Yeah, now it can't go mm -hmm. anywhere. You drill the other holes. And you're good to go. Now those holes are lined up perfect. I'll go ahead and show you how I do this. I cut this. I usually stain them first or put mm -hmm. the lacquer on. Sure. Them. Let me show you. Beautiful little piece of wood. I'm going to come over to this piece. I might get a little bevel. Just a little. I always just kind of know where that's going to be, so I give it a little, give it a little, give it a little, give it a little. Uh, uh, this is ready for the electronics. Uh -huh. Cool. And you have to put backing in there. So you have to put backing in it mm -hmm. to uh, oh, see. Yeah, solidify yeah, that the wrong way. But uh, that's what I do. Sometimes you got to edge those so that mm -hmm. the box closes. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, it's tough. You, you just, it's durable. And you can use uh, last. You know, poplar or pine for the for the guts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, these things are built to last. They're huh? sturdy. This is sturdy. I mean, it's it's going to last. It's not, not going a little, anywhere. Little, it's not a little fragile toy. You can, go, you can go play festivals with these things. Plug it into a Fender Twin, turn it on 10. Ha! <laughs> go to town. A little reverb. Mm -hmm. Reverb that. and play it. I can't play it. There we go. Yeah. Bam. That's ready for the electronics. We're going to start with uh, start with this box right here. This one, uh, this is how I get them from my dad. I get them like this with the boxes uh, pretty much done. The neck is adhered to the box like this. I'm going to install the pickups and stuff today in it. Pickups, tuning pegs, all that stuff. That's the fun part for me. Here we go.
put the pickup in. I have to make some little micro adjustments on this particular pickup that I get to um, make it sit right, otherwise it sits too high. Make sure it's gonna sit still sitting a little high. This is the fun part. pick up with the gold box. This is the uh, input jack that I'm going to put in and install. And I use good quality input jacks from Switchcraft. They're good ones. So that's the jack. Which I install here. This is the potentiometer volume pot. That's what we use for the volume. All right. This is the fun part, the soldering. So, try a little solder on there. There we go. I use this vintage style wiring, guitar wiring. You don't have to strip these wires the way it comes. You just pull the pull a little little sleeve back like that, and it's ready to go. Vintage style wiring. Simple. Test to make sure the pickup is actually working after I wired it. So while you're in the amp, um, and I just uh, I just tap it with this little metal thing, and it's it sounds that sound. I turn the volume down, and so that's how I know that the pickup is uh, wired correctly and it's working. It's picking it up. So now that I've verified that the um, pickup is working, I like to secure it in there just in case something doesn't come, come undone when it's getting moved around or something. So I just put a little wire strap, tie wrap. The electronics are in there. It's, it's wired up. It's working. Close the box up. The part is done. Next, I'm going to put the um, tuning finger on there. So the tuning pegs go in there, like this. Got this little bushing that goes in there. There we go, tuning page installed.
So here's one of my favorite parts of the process. I use a bottle cap here. The bottle cap prevents the strings from sliding into the wood or eroding their way into the wood, should I say, by changing the strings. Anyway, you'll see. So this one of the coolest parts is picking out the proper bottle cap. And this is a crucial part of it because this is what ties everything together. So I have, I collect bottle caps when I'm on the road, traveling all around. I've got them from Europe. I've got them from all over the world if I see them. I collect them, so I got a big bag of bottle caps to choose from. I'm just going to sift through here and wait for one to present itself. I'm looking for something with uh, the colors of the box in there. Gold, black, tie it together. I think I'm going to go with the, uh, this one. I believe Avita is a beer from New Orleans. So since this cigar box is going to Samantha Fish and Company for her cigar box raffle when she lives in New Orleans, Oh, this is perfect. I told you one will present itself. So here's what I do with the bottle cap. This is a little process. So I flatten the bottle cap out. So I do this to start with. So I'm just kind of pulling around the edges of it here. I finished the process by my makeshift press, which is a flashlight that doesn't work anymore for obvious reasons. Um, yeah. For some reason, this flashlight doesn't work anymore. I don't know why, but there we go. And then I do this to kind of pull these because it's a little bit sharp. So I like to make sure that the edges aren't sticking up. Going down right there. And I place this here in the box, center it. But this really ties the whole thing together bottle cap is crucial. <laughs> Pre-drill these holes. Of course, I'd be extremely careful doing that. And folks, these cigar boxes are built very durable. Uh, they're built to last, and they're built to be played. You plug the sucker into a freaking Fender Twin Reverb on a festival, crank it up to 10, it'll deliver. Now, this is where I run the strings through this little spot here. So right now, I'm drilling the holes for the strings. I put this little piece of wood back here when I drill the hole through. My brother showed me this. It keeps the, uh, it, it keeps it smooth on the other side when the drill bit comes out of the, out of the hole there on the other end. It prevents it from uh, splintering on the other side. You put that piece of wood there. There it is. And that way on the back, it's nice and smooth. All right, it's getting close to being done. Um, now I'm going to put the dowels on there. This little part. This is going to be the... Uh, Basically, our our um, our bridge, essentially, is what this is. So I angle a little bit. It's angled. If you notice, that's for the intonation. Um, so this thing will be in tune better. This is a pull saw, meaning it only cuts when you pull. If you push on it, it's not cutting when you pull it. There it is. That's that. Very easy to use too. Take these and sand them off a little bit to make the edges smooth. I find this uh, activity to be very soothing. It's good for the mind. Creating something, making something. So now that's nice and smooth. Yeah. I take this old Elmer's wood glue. Um, I get some out of there. Oops. It's going to hold this in place. And 
that glue out of there. Now we add the strings. Folks always ask what, what strings I use on here. And uh, I, it's an E string, so it's a 52. That's a pretty heavy gauge string. Um, then I use the G string, and it's an 18 plain round. So that's the two gauges of strings that we use for it. And I'm all about efficiency, folks. It's kind of an easier way to do something, why not? Well, I just had this on the gig the other night when I broke a string, and I didn't. Time's precious, folks. That's why I like to do a lot of these things. It's all about efficiency. All right. So there's that. I'm going to tighten these kind of a little bit so they're pulling down on these frets. I got to wait for those to dry for a few minutes. See how pretty that looks? Now, there's a uh, Tighten this little set screw here and you're good. All right, now I'm just going to put the uh, strut pegs on there. I got some gold ones too, which would be nice with the gold, gold stuff on the box. folks yeah cigar box guitar it's ready to go one of the final steps in uh, building this thing and putting it together and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna file out the slots for the strings right here so I got this uh, it's just a little saw tiny saw not necessarily file but it works perfectly for the G string <laughs> I got this other file. This is a different file. This is a little thicker for the thicker string for the, for the lower E. The big 52. All right. That's that. Stretching the strings out. Final thing, mark out the frets. There it is. So right now I'm going to mark out the uh, um, what would what would normally be the frets. I just like to call them targets because I don't mark it out um, essentially, you know, like a exactly like a guitar. I, I, I leave some out. So I, I basically spell out a pentatonic scale. There's my four. So. And all I'm doing is I got I both I got both these strings tuned to the same. So I just I leave one string open and play another one on top until I find the spot. There it is. You hear it when it gets there. I'm gonna mark out that little spot. Here when it 
gets there. When it arrives at its destination, you hear it. It's ready to play. It's ready to ship. All right, there we have it. You can see there, that's what it's doing. Now I got targets. Now let's play it. Now I got my targets. Source High Productions, y'all. Thank you guys for joining us on this video. We really appreciate it. And um, I hope you learned something. I know I did. And um, yeah, go to the website, jpsource.com. You can purchase your own Cigar Boss guitar right there. And I have an instructional video tutorial on my website. 20 minute tutorial will teach you how to play the thing. So not only are we gonna have a video teach you, teach you how to build it, we have a video to teach you how to play the thing. So anyway, folks, thanks for joining us. Source High Productions, y'all.